Okay, so this um, third video in the Sales 101 series is going to be quite a, a quick one. Um, it's going to cover goals and connections. So um, the first one we'll have a look at goals. So um, goals can be found under the sales section, under the goals um, headed here. So um, we're not going to cover kind of uh, custom metrics uh, or child goals in this video. This is really uh, just a kind of basic introduction to goals and what they are. So clicking on here, it gives you kind of a few different uh, a few different goals here. We're just going to ignore some kind of like random random issues that I, I'm having with my child environment at the moment because it really doesn't matter um, for the purpose of this video. Um, so what are goals? Um, essentially goals are, are really kind of quite self-explanatory and they enable you to pretty much track your goals. Um, whether that's not just financial, so with with kind of sales, um, that is that is kind of linked with um, uh, with revenue on opportunities. Um, but that's not to say that it is just uh, just that. Um, if I go ahead and just create a new one here, so just to kind of show you uh, a little bit, you've kind of got three uh, kind of metrics that are actually created as standard for you. You've got number of cases, uh, number of product units and revenue. So um, the main kind of two, well the only two kind of different ways of, uh, what's the right word, um, rolling up kind of information is in kind of two forms, which is account, um, which is, is the number of ca cases, or it can be a uh, kind of... Uh, an amount so it's important that's not revenue because it's not necessarily a currency or money involved it could be just a simply um, a, a kind of total amount of a certain value of like a decimal value that isn't anything related to a currency so um, that's quite important to remember that so um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and create a goal and we'll walk through some of the kind of key points here so I'm going to select revenue because this is sales 101 it's kind of more pertinent and kind of more relating to the, the subject of the video really um, and let's just say Sarah's yearly goal. So it's important in terms of that goal owner. So I'm I'm the goal owner here, um, and uh, I'm not really going to go into this kind of relationship with the whole manager and goal owner um, and that kind of uh, thing in this video at the moment. So um, we're just going to keep those the same for the time being. The next kind of important section is the time period. So this is. Um, pretty much when when your goal is to and from now you can and it is automatically set to kind of like the fiscal period so your financial kind of periods that can be set up in the business management section of CRM um, however you also have the option of a custom period as well so this pretty much then disables the fiscal um, uh, fields and then you pretty much then put your manual uh, dates in uh, pretty much so um, it's really that simple so when I selected my goal metric this is when my target field becomes populated as well so kind of if you are kind of trying to fill this in without put, putting your metric in here this won't populate so let's just say my my kind of goal money is pretty light I'm just going to go ahead and save that and so that's 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 uh, all saved so at the moment I've got nothing uh, nothing on here. Um, there is a in the settings area of CRM it does actually um, have a period of time that this rolls up because essentially what happens is you can see that I've got a few different well the, the main one here has been recalculate um, to actually kind of say go ahead and calculate kind of all my stuff for my goal. Now what do I mean by all my stuff? Essentially that's uh, in relation to all the uh, the records that are asso associated to my revenue roll up um, my goal metric uh, the, the essentially the roll up that it does as part of the goal metric um, and what it looks at is uh, opportunities essentially that are in progress um, and uh, opportunities that have been won so that's essentially that differentiation here between actuals here and in progress so if I just go ahead and just click recalculate so it does come up with that little warning because it doesn't know how much data it's essentially um, kind of dealing with at that time. So you can see here that this this hasn't got a lot of data to deal with. It's pretty much done it almost in, instantly. So you can see here that I've now got actual and I've got in progress here. So I'm actually doing pretty well on my goal. And you can actually see that it gives you a percentage achieved here and when it was last rolled up. So if you are relying on that kind of like scheduled timer, you can see when it was last rolled up as well. But just like I did, you've got that recalculate button as well. If you kind of want to drill more more into um, the kind of data that's behind this, you can actually look at the participating records on the left hand side here. So you can see here that um, I've got the 500 there. 
um, and you can see there that you've got 10. So you're probably thinking, oh, hold on, Sarah, that doesn't kind of quite amount to that 475 in the actuals. Let's go ahead and inspect that. So can you see here that this was actually quite closed with the actual value of 475. So um, whilst it does actually take um, for those in progress, uh, it takes estimated for those final ones, it's the final uh, value that it was actually closed at. So um, that's kind of where, where you just need to just be, be kind of slightly careful with this estimated revenue field here. So um, that's pretty much goals uh, in a nutshell. They really aren't that complicated uh, on the face value of it. If you kind of want to take more of a deep dive into kind of how it does it, then feel free to kind of take a look at, at the actual out of the box goal metrics, which I'll probably recommend if you want to kind of go uh, a little bit more advanced into goals. Um, but I'm sure I'll do that in another video anyway. So um, just nice and light. So yeah, that's, that's goals. Uh, so we'll move on to connections next. Okay, so the second section is uh, similar to the goals in that we're not going to go into too much detail on this, it's just pretty much going to be a quick introduction to connections. I'm going to put a slight skew on this in relation to sales a little bit, um, but hopefully it will kind of give you a, a bit more of a rounded picture of connections and, and pretty much uh, their part in, in CRM really. So um, connections is actually quite sadly one of those kind of areas of CRM that often gets ignored and I think it's probably because it doesn't really take up a prominent kind of place in CRM a lot of people kind of just look at the sitemap look at these kind of items or look, uh, essentially associate CRM with the processes um, when actually connections is quite a strong area of um, of CRM because what it allows you to do um, is pretty much kind of connect records <laughs> quite self-explanatory, similar to goals really, but um, uh, they connect one record to another um, as, as some form of role. Um, and let's just take a, a look at this record here and let's just have a look to see if it's got any connections. So, okay, so we've got one connection here. So we've got Alex here and he's connected, um, uh, sorry, we've got this opportunity and this is connected to Alex uh, in, in the role of, um, of a cat. So um, we can see here that if you just double click on that, um, we can we can see that that record. Now you're kind of asking kind of what does that do? Um, essentially, in relation to sales, it allows you to kind of connect some kind of key kind of um, people associated to that opportunity, and um, whether this is a lead opportunity, um, a quote, etc. Um, and one of the kind of things is that when when you're connecting to and from, the most natural kind of response, especially if to customizers point of views is to actually use a lookup field instead. Now it's kind of a big debate uh, on using connections versus lookups. Um, the idea in, and just a few just to kind of stream off a few benefits of uh, using connections over lookups really is the fact that you don't want to kind of make your uh, your kind of relationships a bit of a mess because if you find that okay one look up another look up and and by the time you, you're just kind of floating around in a bath of lookups basically in your in your kind of database structure um, and it can be quite messy um whereas with connections it's an out of the box um piece of uh kind of functionality you don't need to do anything it is and can be actually quite complex as well so um it's to avoid that kind of bath of lookups you don't want to kind of um just create connections and links uh, lookups to each like holes in tables basically um by using connections essentially you can kind of circumvent that the circumvent that um and pretty much get kind of what you're looking for which is that kind of this table is connected to this table um instead uh, of kind of creating what could be a lot of different actual lookup records in specific tables um so if that if that made any sense so a few of the other um a few of the other kind of benefits um are is is similar to what i kind of just said in that it kind of does keep things a lot cleaner um because obviously if you've got lots of lookups and you have to put them on the form um and you have to kind of name them appropriately and especially if you've only got cert certain circumstances in those lookups and pretty much a lot of them are probably going to be blank which means you're probably going to want to put business rules on to hide them and before you know it you've had to put this whole hunk of functionality in your form when you simply could have probably used connections so that's uh, that's another kind of just just what one and one to two kind of reasons to to kind of consider at least consider connections to see if it would kind of um 
uh, meet meet your needs uh, and like I said it's it's a standard functionality if if it's not your yourself um, then at least introduce it to the client and kind of say hey look at this this is actually pretty awesome functionality it lets you connect one thing to another and we don't actually have to do anything about it um, so you can kind of say let's connect connect up here and um, you it's basically saying well hey what do you want to what do you want to connect to I'm going to connect this to uh, an account and then we've got well what do you want to connect as and you actually have a um you have kind of full power over this to a certain extent you've kind of you can put uh whatever you want so let's just say partner and we want to save and close that so that's fantastic so let's go ahead and do another one mm, let's say alpine and let's say an influencer so let's go back to this opportunity so we've now got um if i go and have a look we've now got kind of quite a few different then connections there so one of the things that you can actually then do is you can actually customize this a little, little bit so if i go to business management and i've got my connection roles so i've got loads so i've actually got absolute loads and you might be kind of thinking well why did only a few kind of uh, appear on on that screen and the reason being is you've actually got a few different th things you can kind of configure and this is what I don't think a lot of people realize um, people just think oh it's just connecting one thing to another my functionality is a little bit more complex than that and actually under the hood connections are actually quite complex you can you can actually configure them quite quite nicely which actually means that then you can make some really kind of cool views cool dashboards if that's what you need um, need as a business so you've obviously got your name so this is where I've, I've kind of created that cat role um, and actually what I interestingly you've actually got what's called a connection role category as well so you can actually put different categories that are associated to this to this role um, and then that's when you can kind of then again use this more into your filter and into your advanced finds exactly how the stakeholder um, uh, functionality so that ca that grid uh, on the um, opportunity form and um, that's how uh, how this is is used and also the sales team as well this is all kind of using connections and using that um uh, just using kind of filtering basically you can put your description in here and then you can actually say oh hey do you actually want to only say this is applicable for certain record types so we've got this one here so this is actually only applicable for task and not uh, nothing else is there any any others nope there is nothing else so that means that when like what I just did a moment ago and actually say hey I want to add a connection when I select the role it will it won't appear in that list and that's why uh, pretty much majority of these didn't appear because they are not um, uh, not kind of opportunity kind of roles basically and then finally you've got the matching connection roles so the, the best way to kind of demonstrate this so kind of with, and if you are using this I'd suggest name them aptly if you're kind of making new custom connections um, connection roles is that you've actually got then former employer and former employee so essentially when you connect them if you go to the one that you're connecting to and actually then look at connection so you're looking through the other window as as such it will actually then say the opposite so you've actually got quite a reciprocal kind of connection there that makes perfect sense so if you've got perhaps another department that's looking through the other window at the other record and you've actually made that connection to that to that um, record it makes perfect sense for them it's not going to say former employer former employer because that kind of doesn't make sense in in our in our society so that's pretty much it with connections really um there's nothing more to them um and yeah uh, essentially i'll definitely just recommend um just kind of considering it this is functionality that's in the system already you do not need to do anything um with them and it's actually cool to kind of just um, use uh, to help inform your opportunity especially through the sales process you can kind of define those stakeholders influences and so on so um, yeah hope it helps